hallelujah i assume i believe that everybody had i trust not trust not even assume i believe that everybody had a blessed day amen you are mm -hmm. seeing me there from a different angle here is because i have a book on my table right there amen this is the character um the character development um, manual of the dual generation earlier which i will be explaining one of the character tricks um tonight also to help us um, understand what we need to our assignment a little better even as even as i explain it amen i'm, I'm believing god that um, persons would understand it a little uh, much better amen Let's open so in first, the word of prayer. A, can I ask a question? A question, I please. Did a, I did the assignment. I did um, responsibility versus unreliability. Uh -huh. I don't know. Anyway, I did it, so I will just, I guess, what is my turn? I will do it. I don't know. You will, well, I, yes, uh, yeah. Um, I'll definitely um, give people a chance to present um, a days up here. Uh, all will not be done tonight. Tonight, I really want to explain it a little further. So maybe you can sharpen it and get a little better understanding of what we're supposed to do. Amen? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Let, let us open in a word of prayer. Um, I have the book. Like I said, I have the book before me. This is the same um, material that you have. Amen. Let's open in the word of prayer. Father, we give you thanks and praise. My God, we give you honor and we give you glory. We thank you for your blessing, Heavenly Father, upon us today. As we do this course, God, I declare by the fire of God, by the power of God, by the anointing of the Lord, we will receive help from the Lord. Our help coming from the Lord who made heaven and earth. Lord, thank you, Father, for helping us, Lord, because you said in your word, study to show yourselves approved unto God. A woman who needs not to be ashamed, but rightly, rightly dividing the word of truth. Oh my God, that's why we are here, to rightly divide that word that we could live a better life. Lord, we could be better characters before you, in Jesus' mighty name, by implementing Amen. the Father, the good character traits in our lives, Lord, eliminating the negative ones, hallelujah, that we could live a successful life for you. We give you thanks and praise. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Praise God. Hallelujah. Well, so we have um, um, brother, brother Michael. Um, we have um, sister, sister Jenny over here. We have sister Maureen. We have sister Lisa. Good night. Good night. We have sister Emma. We have prophetess Flores. Hallelujah. We have sister Najla. We have sister Jenny. We have sister Jenny. Is your husband there with you? Yes. Good night, prophet. Good night, James. Good night, my brother. Amen. Amen. We have, we have, um, brother Miguel. Hallelujah. Uh huh. We have sister Sasha. Hope I did not miss. No, sister Motler. Who did we miss? Uh, did I miss anybody? Brenda. Sister Brenda. Uh, sister Brenda is there too. I don't know. Uh, I don't know. Yes. Name. I was going according to the names. Uh, okay, yeah. she's not here yet. Amen. Well, um, since this is a very exciting course that we are doing there. Um, it's very beneficial, very beneficial to every one of us. Today, I, I did a little video, which I will be playing. I'll be playing the little video on what I did um, today. But even before I go into the video, I would like to go immediately into the teachings. Um, I did send you to the, um, the opposite, um, um, meaning for the other word that you have um, in the in the character traits. So you have the positive, and Dr. Sifas gave the meaning for it up here. So you have one, some of them have two meanings to it. For example, I have faith, and um, um, the opposite of faith is presumption. Mm -hmm. Amen? So you have the meaning of faith, but then um, you, didn't have, you didn't have the meaning of presumption, but um, according to the the guidelines of the course, it says that you can get to a, a dictionary or preferably, you know, a good Bible dictionary, you know, to get the meaning. 
But I sent, you know, it would have been maybe too much work for everybody to go and look for it. So I sent you something. Amen? How many of you received it on your WhatsApp? Yeah. I thought it's perfect. Yeah, very I, good, I, yes. I just saw that, eh? A while ago. I don't uh, already... just, a while ago, yes. Uh -huh. So you can go through it. So this will give you the meaning of the negative. Because the positive is what we want to have in us. The negative is what already there. We don't even know how it gets there. Amen? Amen. It's just there. So um, in mind tonight, I want to look at each one of you. You're supposed to be choosing one of those character traits. And then um, prepare a, a message from it. It's just that you're going down through it up here. Answer the questions just like you would make a presentation. I also sent um, um, a little um, MP3 message of how I will go about it up here. So give you a little guide, um, a guy guide, guideline um, towards it up here. This would help you. since those things. What it does, it also helps you to prepare a message. Amen. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you want to prepare a message. You you could have different audience. You could have an audience as children. So you need to know how you're gonna face that audience. So then you need to always have your material before. If your audience is going to be um, a church, then you have a mixture of people. So you have um, you have you have male, you have female, men, women, you have and children. So you are preparing a message, especially for Sunday morning. So in your message, you um, you have to try to meet everybody. Amen. Amen. Um, when I when I prepare a message for children, if I know I know I'm speaking to children. So children, they are more visual. Children want to see things. Children, their attention span is shorter. Children will not give you half an hour just watching you. Children will not give you half an hour just listening to you. Since they get distracted very fast, they will move away from you and they put their minds home. They put their minds on the next place they have to go. They put their minds on so many other things that they have to do. So when you are dealing with children, you have to do things or bring things to keep the attention where you need it. Amen? Everybody say amen. 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 Hallelujah. amen. amen. So I'm just going to take the position of, let's say I'm going to teach a class. So in this air, I am presenting, I don't know if you've seen, you, may not, you might not be seeing their faith. Um, faith versus presumption. Or faith and the negative is presumption but I want to look at faith so in my hand I have the character manual in my hand um, you will not keep your head down for too long what did I say you will not keep your head down for too long very good that's why God gave you eyes eyes contact are very important that is why whoever is the presenter you need to try your best to know, try to memorize as much as you can from your material. Hello? Mm. Bam. Gonna mm -hmm. say it again. This is recorded. Whoever is going to be the presenter, try to memorize as much as you can from your material because what keeps people listening to you is eye contact. People want to know that you know what you are saying when you're talking to them, even if you can read, but it should not be uh, reading 100% of all what you are saying. It's almost like it's not you talking to them. It's a message you're carrying from somebody who was just too busy, and they just find you, and they tell you, bring that there. Hello? Amen. Hello? You, want to, you want to own, you want to, you, you want to own what you have. In other words, you have a cell phone. When you got your cell phone from the company, you made a lot of changes to that phone, right or wrong? Amen. You made a lot of changes. You have your own case, right? Mm -hmm. um, you have your own case. You, um, you even change the, the your, how you call it, the screen? Huh? Yeah. Yeah, how you call it? The background, whatever picture you put, the, you you put your face on it. The background. Right, the background. So you have personalized. You have personalized your phone. 
Well, since that's what we do, do not take another chair because that is there for me to go out and say it. That is what we do when um, we, we go out there to minister. You need to personalize as much as you can your message. Hello? <laughs> you need to try your best to personalize it. I'm not saying everything that you say will be relating to you, but as much as you can, try to personalize your message. So now I'm going to present faith, faith versus presumption. Now I have two words that I mentioned there. There is a, one is a negative and one is a positive. Um, the positive, the reason why I will mention the positive first because um, in my message, I do not want people to um, remember more on the positive than the negative. Did you hear what I say? Amen. 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 What I want to leave, what I want to leave with my audience, doesn't matter the age group, what I would like to leave with my audience is the positive. Amen. So what I'm going to do now, I'm um, presenting faith um, versus presumption, faith or presumption, or, or, or presumption. I will explain both. I will touch on the negative one first. Now, look at how I'm going to present the negative one. Now, if I had to present this as a message, and then let's say the people I'm going to are children, I will create a theme, not a theme, I'll create a title. So the title would be, okay, let me just bring it to, David and Goliath. No, shall I say? So if I say, if I say, David and Goliath. Oh, no. David and Goliath at war. What is my title? David and Goliath oh, at war. At war. Now remember, I am not moving away from my subject. I, I what I'm teaching today is faith versus presumption. Amen. But then David and Goliath at war. Now you know the children know that story. David and Goliath at war. So a lot of the points that I'll be bringing in faith, Judah, you are disturbing me. A lot of the points that you are bringing in faith here with David and Goliath at war. Remember, I'm dealing with faith and presumption up here. I'll make some statements in relation to that because the children already know the story. Now, because they already know the story, and I say David and Goliath at war, if you ask them, who knows Goliath? Put your hands up. You see a lot of hands going up, right or wrong? Mm. Who knows David? Yay! You know what happened there? I have broken the ice, the little nervousness. I get the children excited, you understand? Know, because guess what? The theme of my message is already bringing forth something to their mind, right? Hello? Hello? I, Hello. Think you are lost. I, I don't know how best I can reach, reach to everybody, but I am. I hope I'm not getting you lost. Remember, I am still on faith um, um, versus presumption. So now, David and Goliath... We're, we're listening, for, but we're just breaking up it, so that's how I have my mic off. So Okay, once you all hear me clearly, that's good. So now... So now, in faith, I will ask, I'll say to them, I need to call David the champion. I want to, because there are two champions there, Goliath was a champion. But we also have another champion. So we have two champions fighting, right or wrong? Yes. Yeah. We have two champions. We have David, God's champion. And who is Goliath? Satan champion. champion. Two champions fighting. Mm -hmm. So, one champion has faith. That's all he has as his, as, as his weapon. Who do you think has faith as his weapon? Your mm -hmm. audience, talk back to me. Who do you think mm -hmm. has faith as his weapon? David. 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 Clap, 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 clap. Clap for them. Hallelujah. Who said David? And you see a lot of little hands going up because I have to do this because they are children to catch their attention. Amen? 
But he says, if I'm presenting that message to maybe adults, I will not present it so. Are you all there with me? But you need to know how to talk to children. Children, when you're speaking with them, um, most of the time, if you can get them involved in your message, and they will always be there with you. Hello? Amen. Amen. So I'm just, I'm doing it that way. So that's my presentation, when I present the children. So then David, all right, they said, they said David. Okay, very good. So David used faith as his weapon. Ah, what did Goliath use? Goliath didn't use faith. Goliath was using his strength. Goliath was, was depending on his spear. Goliath was depending on his sword, right? Amen. You all know the story. Amen? Yeah. So now, if David is using faith, David took, what did David kill Goliath with? Can anybody okay. tell me? A sling and a stone. And a, a sling and a stone. Who said that? I, there's a little one sitting in the back there. Yes, this child. I didn't hear you clearly. Say it again. Louder. A sling and a stone. A sling and a stone. All right. How many of you know what? How many of you? How many of you know what a sling is? I. You know what a sling is? Your mother taught you what a sling is? Tell me a what a sling is. A catapult if a stick at the end, a white stick. A, a white catapult? Stick, no. What do you all know about catapult? You just bought it up a catapult? <laughs> eh? You also come on video too, I'm, I'm, because I'm teaching, this, I'm dealing with little children. Hey, look at that, somebody show me a catapult. You look who I look genuine. You watch a catapult. Everyone. Little sister, amen. Look, That's look a genuine and brother, yeah. and brother Michael mm. Abbott. Beautiful, brother Michael. Now stay on video if you have a ball because I need you there. <laughs> Here I have the children, and I'm almost halfway in my message because guess what? I'm presenting to the children faith versus presumption. Now, do you know I have not gotten into all the big words and trying to break it to confuse the children? You all realize that? Okay. Yeah, because I'm presenting faith versus presumption. And I have, I have brought my, my message into characters that they know. But look at how I fitted it into David. So David is God's champion and he's using faith. And he's using faith and he's using a weapon that cannot defeat Goliath. So because he's using faith now, he, David is using this weapon and he has his sling, right? Mm-hmm. Now, a little, David took five little stones. How many stones did David take to kill Goliath? Five. Now, how many of you? Let me see your fingers. Now, some of you come on video if you can. Because the reason why I'm doing it that way is because I am doing one for children, and then I'm going to do another one where you will see I'm preaching to a church audience. This one I did on video today, but this one I'm doing there with his children. So I'm doing faith versus presumption. How many, how many stones did David use? How many stones did David take to go to the battle with? Five stones. Five, five stones. Let me see. Count, count it on your fingers. Let me see. Some of you have six fingers, but count five for me. Go. Two, three, One, two, three, four, five. How many of you have six fingers? Uh, uh, six. On one hand. I have a little. Hallelujah. On my, on my left you have a little one. Uh, you know what they said? When you have a little one, they say you are special. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. They say you are very special to have six. Amen. So you all say on video, B, I need a little audience there. Now, thank you. Thank you so much. So now, so David is using faith. And now because he's using faith, he is, God is not allowing David to use the same weapon as Goliath. How many of you know that? If God is going to use you to do something, then God cannot use you like the children of the devil. That's right. Amen. It has to be different. Amen. So David is using a weapon that is different to everybody. David Amen. is using a sling and a stone. And so that is why we say to you, when you have faith in God, faith in God is different to the faith that you would have out there with the devil. Faith in God does not show much. It's, it's not much. But I'm telling you, when you see God is in it, it's big, right? Yeah. Faith in God may not be much. It's just a little. But when God is in it, that faith is big. 
So look at this over here. Look at how look, look at how it works. So now David took the little stone and the sling. How many of you swing your hands for me five times? One, let's go. Two, let's go. Let me see you swing it. Three, let me see you again. Four, five, drop the stone now. Woo. Mm. How many of you feel that knock? Why did it knock him? Why did the stone knock go down? Everybody touch your head. I swear. Right on your forehead. Right. Now, you see where the stone of gold lie up on his forehead there? That was just the area that was exposed. That's the only little area gold lie up had exposed. Because his whole body, he had his armor, he had his everything up there, and just a little hole in the forehead, and the stone go inside of there. Hallelujah. Now, what if, what if that little stone did not reach there? Do you think it is David's perfection? That dropped the stone in that little hole in, Dave, um, in Goliath's head. Can anybody tell me? Mm -hmm. yeah, it was so perfect mm -hmm. to throw the stone to knock Goliath in his forehead. God. God directed there. Let me tell you, yes, there's a little boy in the back there. You, you, yes, yes, you have the answer. Don't be shy. Talk, tell, say to me, go ahead. Your name is Michael. Let me hear. Say it again. I said, God directed the stone to go right there um, in his forehead. Okay, clap, 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 clap for him. Your mother will be proud of you. Very good. Uh, and you on TV again. Right. Your mother will be proud of you. You heard what that little boy said? God directed that stone to go in that little hole in the forehead. Now, that is something I say to you. You see, when you pray, children, you have the right faith in God. And you pray. You know what God will do? God will use your little prayers and then he'll direct it and he will beat the devil with it. Right? Right. So that is what it is up here. So, so what I want to say to you, there is a faith. And the type of faith I want to talk to you about, listen to this up here. I want to show you what type of faith it is. It is the God type of faith. Now, let me give you, let me give you two meanings to that God type of faith. How many of you want to have that God type of faith to kill giants? Put up your hands. Some of you, I told you, I see on camera, y'all didn't see. I told you, I want a little audience. Y'all run in. Why are y'all afraid of camera? Put your little hands up. Right, very good. Right, how many of you? How many of you want the God type of faith? Let me see your little hand. You shy? Your mother tell you don't put up your hand? All right, now I see your hand. Look at the little one. All right, nice. I see all the hands. Okay, so you want the God type of faith. That will kill giants for you. Now, you, do you know that the devil is a giant? How many of you know that the devil is a giant? And the devil is a giant. Very good. So we have faith in you know, us that can kill the giant. So listen, let me give you two meanings of that faith, and I'll tell you how to use that faith. I said, I'm saying that to you. Remember, I'm on the subject of faith and presumption, but I'm dealing with children. Mm -hmm. So that type of audience up here, the reason why they have given me so much time and attention is because I got them involved. You understand? Mm -hmm. I never present a message mm -hmm. to children without them being involved in it. Up here. That's how you speak to children. You must always get them involved. Mm -hmm. They are very hyper and the, 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 the attention span is very short. So now I say to them, you know how to get that faith, the faith that David had? This is how you get it. Visualizing what God intends to do in a given situation and acting in harmony with it. You know what David did? David had to visualize it. David said, uh-huh, I see God killed that man already. David thought of it and he planned it. And he said, you see, I'm not coming to that battle with no sword. Because King Saul tried to give David a sword to go and fight Goliath. David said, uh-uh, I'll go back and I'll use what God asked me to do and I, and I will win. And since that's what happened. David used the sling and the stone because that's what God told him, go to the battle with. And many times it happens to us, we do not use what God asks us to do. We use what people ask us to use. And when we go to those battles, the enemy beating us, right? Always use the word of God. Hello? Yes. Now, what does the five stone stands for? It stands for five, maybe five scriptures. Maybe some, some of you can say, okay, you need to learn five scriptures, you know, um, for, for the month. Maybe you need to learn five scriptures for the week if you can. But mm -hmm. learn five scriptures because David took five stones. Because that's how David he says to visualizing what God intends to do in a given situation and acting in harmony with it. But so then for you to visualize it up here, you need to know the word of God. So you need to learn five scriptures. How many of you will ask mommy to teach you five scriptures? Let me see your hand. 
Put your little hands up. Right, right. When you go home. Yes, yes, yes. I see that hand over there. Uh -huh. Right, I see your hand there too. So you ask, when you go home, ask mommy to teach you five scriptures. Amen. Very good. Now, um, the other thing I want to teach you over there is. Oh, you have this record. Pardon, I just. What did you say? I said you have this record that I miss um, some parts. So. Okay, you have it recorded. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It recorded. Yes. Okay. Here is the other thing, children. Now remember, since children may, I, I trying to do this in ten minutes, eh? But because of you, I prolong. It wasn't just children. I finish already. But then listen to this. Here is another meaning I'll give the children. Now sometimes children is better give them one meaning. If you try to give them three different meanings, they forget it. But the first thing I give them is good already. But I see keep them visualizing what God intends to do in a different situation and acting in harmony with it. So you need to see that you win Goliath already. Hallelujah. Before you go to the battle, never go to a battle if you're in doubt. Go to the battle knowing that, oh, yes, thank you, Jesus. I win it. Amen. That means you must not pray in doubt. Never pray asking God things that you don't believe God can give you. Hello. Yeah. Children, clap, 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 clap. Let me hear you clap. You're all too quiet. Clap, 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 clap. I was in 18 and they would say, clap it, 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 clap it. Now, you know why I do that sense? It's because you need to read them. The attention span gone already. So now I stop here because I was dealing with children. So put your hands together and clap it for me. Clap, 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 clap. That's the end of my message. Clap, 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 clap. Very good. So I was dealing with an age group there, very minor, minor children. So when you deal with children, since plan it well and try to be, not to be too long, but be brief and look for characters that you think they know already and try to fit your story into it. Hello? No. Am I making sense? Anybody have any questions for me? Please question me because the next one I will do, it will be a different audience. It will not be children. Now I'm going to deal with adults in the next one I'll do. Anybody have any question on this? No question? No, perfect. No question, no question, no question. What did I do wrong? What did I do that um, helped you in any way? Uh, the, the point it's is very perfect. Okay, one one at a time. Brother but, Michael, yes, go ahead. I uh, said so the point is bringing it was a good point showing that when we're dealing with children, how we could start dealing with them, how we could start off. Yes, by telling you need them to come very good, brother. You need to come down to their level. Since so the reason why yes. sometimes we don't communicate well with children because we 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 live all up there and we all up there communicating to them down there, but sometimes you have to sit to yes. talk to a child. You understand? Mm -hmm. There are times you have to put them to sit to talk with them. There are times you have to come down to their level. You see the little ones? Ask preschool teachers about that. They literally oh, come down to the school level to communicate you. things with them. If it's, if, 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 if Sister Marina, tell me, I mean, you take care of children, too, right? Yes, Prophet. How do you communicate? How do you communicate with us? Sister Sasha, I need to hear your voice because you are working with children, too. How do you all communicate with children? Get with them up to their level. Mm -hmm. um, you have to communicate with them in order that they can understand you. If they don't, they get frustrated mm -hmm. um, and they don't follow instructions. Mm -hmm. You don't communicate down to their level. Mm -hmm. what, well, age those, group are you, what age group are you speaking of there? Well, um, from, from babies to mm -hmm. maybe toddlers, maybe to four or five around that age, but as babies, um, the only thing that I find, you will communicate to a baby the way you will talk to them. Their parents don't want you to do that. They want you to speak up to them, as, you know, like they are like um, adult Adults. level. They don't want them to be like babies. You don't babble to them, nothing. So that is, that is um, referring to children, taking care of children in the US, right? Yeah. Uh-huh. Right. So they want you, you they, 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 they don't tell them things like dada. -da. They want you to tell them daddy. Nope, you can't say that to them. They find that is too much at a lower level. Mm -hmm. So you have to speak to them like you will right. speak to an adult. Yeah. But then if concerning your tone, I'm gonna use your you're lying to children. 
with your tonal voice when you speak um, um, to them how do you adjust your your tonal voice to communicate things to them when you're talking to them so example if you tell them if they want something to eat you'll ask them you'll say sarah what would you like to eat would you like an orange a banana you give them choices you know you have to be able to be your tone of voice must not be rough you have to have a very nice tone of voice a mellow tone of voice when talking to them mm -hmm. very good Mr. brenda is coming in so you you need to have a mellow tone of voice up here so then you have the passive one so you know which tone of voice to use based on what you want them to do right yes and then you have the tone of voice when they almost gonna run into trouble what tone of voice to use on them you have to be stern with them you have to be stern with them wow yeah, you have a stern, a stern tone of voice so mm -hmm. when they use that stern tone of voice they know Wonderful. Wonderful. And, and okay. they, would know the, they would know the different tone of voice. Mm -hmm. Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice and the answer. Since yes. um, I'm doing this first round presentation because I'm presenting faith. Faith okay. and versus presumption. You notice if the children that I was dealing with there, I didn't go into... I didn't even mention faith too much because I know they know faith. I didn't even go into presumption and I still presented it to them. You realize that? Hello? Hello. 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 That. I still presented it to them because of the age group. Um, let me, Prophetess Flores, are you on? I am on, Prophet. Yes, you, you, you work with children at a daycare. Um, tell me, is there a special way to communicate to children? Oh, do you have a special way of communicating to those children? Well, the way I communicate with them, you have to be gentle with them. You have to, they have to feel their love. Mm -hmm. You have to feel the connection. They have to feel the interaction. Uh -huh. And sometimes even when you are teaching or you're telling them something, sometimes they will um, be distracted. Right. Um, you can, um, you don't have to shout, you can do, um, eye contact. Or, okay, eye contact. Very good. Yeah, you can do a lot of eye contact. Yeah, they understand the eye contact. Or you can do signs with them. Ah. Or you can even sing. You can even sing. Or as you do it, you can clap. If they're all over the place, you know, to calm them down. They have so many different ways. Very good. You can sing a song to them. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. so, so you can sing a song to them and, uh, and they... Now, in terms of your activities, your, do you put a lot of the activities um, in games and different things for them to understand? Yes. You can, if you are singing to them, you, they can make um, signs, actions. Ah. They can make actions with the oh, song so or the they, poem. So they make actions um, to the songs. Wonderful. They action songs, yes. Or they dance. Ah. Or sometimes we give them um, musical instruments. Wonderful. They can play the, the musical instruments together with the song to calm them down. Mm -hmm. but to keep them occupied, to get them uh, interested in what they are doing. Very good. Now, since, uh, let me tell you why I brought this exercise up. Because you all have already been trained and you all know those areas. This, this is the same way. You don't change the method. Yeah, that's how children learn. You bring the word of God into the same environment. Are you all there with me? Yeah. Hello. Yeah. Don't try to read too much of a long text to children. Hello. Yeah. Um, yeah. One thing you will understand about them, they like the stories. You yeah. see there are children Bible? Yeah. And they have pictures. Have you all seen this? Mm -hmm. yeah. You know why they put yeah. they put all those pictures to catch their attention, you know? Yes. And then the, the way they, they rewrite those stories um, in, is to keep them um, interested, to keep the children interested um, in it up here. So and now, you can even, while you're teaching them, you can even do a skit with the story with them instead of good. reading it. Instead of reading it. So you will do yes. a skit with it. So now in faith versus presumption, that's one of the character traits up here. Every time I have to present this, if I have to present it to an age group like children's, 
I, I say and I plan whether uh, I'll, do, I'll go in a character form and what I need to do. But remember, children, they don't give you a lot of time. Try to limit yourself within. If you should be able to deliver that message in five minutes. Are you all there with me? Amen. Right? Prophetess, I mean, you deal with children every day at the daycare. Um, am I right within five, ten minutes? Ten minutes, I think it's a lot, but five minutes is not oh, good. Oh, yes. If you go um, more time, they'll get um, distracted. Get distracted. Some of them will even cry or they will have their own session because yes. what you are saying oh, yes. oh, is already yeah, you session alone. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that is the small age, that's a smaller age group up here. Now, um, let me... I'll give. I'll, remember, I'm doing those things over here because um, I need you to. And uh, that was just really. That's what is good. We're dealing with four years, um, five years. We will do six years. We are dealing with that age group there um, um, when we were speaking up here. Now, for when I go to the school, why is Sister Mottler not there? Sister Mottler, you there? Uh, can you hear me? Yes, I am. Yes, okay, very I am. Since when I go when, when when I go to the school, I'm dealing with the age of 14, 15. I believe that's the age group up here. These are teenagers. So with those children up here, uh, with the same message, faith versus presumption. These are secondary school children. So I will get them involved in my message. So I don't start it like I start this message here. So I'm, let me do a 14 year old. Some of you um, walk with me. I see your hand up. Let me, let me take a message before I go. Sister Naomi, I see your hand. Yes, Prophet, I was just telling you based on my experience. Uh, yes, get me here. I've been a teacher for over 20 years. Yes. Uh, um, Basically, when we freeze, when we, um, we, because I have taught from K, K all the way up to university level. Yes. Uh -huh. And when we teach um, the lesson, like, for example, let us say we were teaching K, K would be five years, five years or what have you, five, five and up. Yes. Four or five, that's K. Yes. Um, one of the things that they taught us is that. How you deliver? How you deliver the lesson? It was interactive. It was it was good. However, they, they, in our training, they, they tell us that you you do not baby them by the tone. Too much baby tone. You um you 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 you, you bring out the message. You, do not, you are not assertive, but you do not bring it in a baby, baby tone because you want yes. to develop their, their skills also in delivering the message. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. I understand it perfectly because that is what Sister Marina was, um, was, was ad um, adhering to a while ago in and terms then of they, seeing... Yeah. Yeah. So that is, what, that, that is how they, they, they train us in delivering the lessons. Yes. And also... They, 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 another method that they use, another strategy, mm -hmm. um, and you did it very well, where you, 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 you involve them, yes. involve them in it. So that's another teaching strategy, where yes. you involve them in it. So they become part of the lesson. So at the yes. end of the, the day, when you evaluate the lesson, you'll, what you will find that everybody understands. Because they yes. were part of the lesson. They were part of the lesson. So far, so far, I, I, just, I don't want to say too much. I just listening. Okay, that's it. No, don't just listen. I want everybody to participate because what one person um, knows is sharpening um, mm -hmm. um, others, and your experience is very much welcome here too. Okay, since now um, we're gonna take the same message, um, faith versus presumption, to um, the older age group. We have 14, 16, um, let me deliver that age here, 13 up here. Those children, teenagers, um, they understand a little bit up here. So now, faith versus presumption. Sometimes I start, when I go to the school, 
I listen to news. I listen to the trends. I listen to things that they are already into to catch their attention. Hello? Because then you need to have a catch when you're dealing with those children. Because they know you're coming already and they know it's a God thing you're going to come and talk about. But then you don't have to make it boring because they expect it to be boring. Hello? Amen. Yes, they, 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 these are smart children. They, they know it's a God thing because it's um what they call it. Um, they call it um religious education. How y'all call it now, Julia? Okay, religious education. They expect it to be boring. So because they expect it to be boring, please, you have to disappoint that. You cannot be bored. So guess what? The things that I know catches the attention, the things that they are into, I bring it into my introduction. So sometimes it has nothing to do with the message itself, but that's my, that's my introduction. How many of you have, how many of you have $5 credit on the food that you have? <laughs> you know why I say that? I just say that, you know, just to catch their attention so that they want to hear me. Right? Because some of them, they don't know why I, I say that. If it's $5 credit, I want to top them up with. But then every time they hear top up, once they hear top up, the student, their, their attention on you already. Right or wrong? Yes. Now, let me stop here because I'm preparing I'm the same message for a 14 year old. Um, how do you get, speak to me, how do you get the attention of a 14 year old, 13, 14, 15, 16 year old? With, if I ask you to go and present a message in the school on, on faith, how would you get the attention? Because that's where it starts. How would you get the attention? Anybody? You utilize the, the technology that they have to bring across the message. Utilize? So you utilize? The, mm -hmm. the, the technology that they have, because you know that's what they're going to be playing with. Right. You utilize the technology that they have to bring across the message. That's so, right. for example, if you want to do something on faith, you may just say, um, okay, you, you do your research, you may just tell them, um, everybody, let's go on to YouTube to watch whatever, whatever, do something. So that's once right. They get that, oh, because that's because once, once you start to talk, talk and talk, they turn off already. They turn off, so yes, come, that's or it. You come, or you come to the class and you just do something crazy, just do a skit, come to a class and just do an act or do something. And yes. when they, they wonder what is happening there. And when you get their attention, then you start. That's then, right. That's a key word there. You've got to have a catch. You've got to have something since to catch, to catch their attention. Prophet, where did you get that from? Since everything, every subject is in the Bible, is in John, when Jesus met the woman at the well. Amen? The first thing he said to her, give me a drink or give me water, where, where Jews not supposed to be even talking to Samaritans. But Jesus had to break the ice of, of hundreds and hundreds and thousands, thousands of years before to be the first to do it. Amen? A Jew speaking to a Samaritan, and his first, his first words to her was to ask her for a drink. Are you all there with me? Amen. That's to break the silence. You need to break the silence. So what I do, like Sister Naomi rightly says, you bring them into an area they love. So she brought them, Sister Naomi rightfully brought them to YouTube, right? Bring them Naomi. somewhere you know they like. Yeah, you, yes, you take them somewhere they like. But Prophet, can I ask a question? Yes, sister. A 13 and a 14 year old prophet <clears throat> supposed yes. to be a child that have understanding. Mm -hmm. And if that child have understanding and would not behave like a, a younger child, which is five, six, I'm just thinking of why can't they sit in a class attentively to listen <laughs> to on, on, um, um, like to use something from YouTube or some other kind of form um, from on, on the internet 
paying attention because when you have a 12 and a 14 year old child and you take that child to church if your parents raise their child in church that child is supposed to sit there attentively and listen to what is going on in church that child should not be distracted by any gadget okay i i will i will answer you too but then i want um thank you very very valuable point you raised my sister but i want um other people to get involved since you hear what she say can anybody tell me why um can anybody have a reply to this before i talk sister marina i will tell you from experience why it is so remember in a classroom sometimes you have 35 students and each child has the individual difference every child in that class is different now as a teacher when you set up your lesson plan you have to capture every child attention that's right now you may think that the child will children in a classroom setting you'll be amazed if you were to keep in as a parent how destructive they can get so in order you you will come to a class and depending on the teacher the child the children might be attentive but there are some teachers when they walk in a class the children will give them at least 15 minutes of help before they settle down so if you know your target group if you know that the, the, the students you are dealing with then you prepare a lesson in such a way that you capture all their attention so if you need to go into a class and the children are always misbehaving when you come into that class to deliver a lesson you must come into that class with something as well as you open your mouth everybody wants to hear hey miss what, what? they want to hear yes you to, you, the strategy must be the first five minutes you have them because if you have them in the first five minutes it's almost like i will explain to you as a teacher i will tell you you have to get into their head you have to get into their head now once you can get into their head you have them and the, the other psychology thing. a lot of psychology you have to you have to you have to get their attention and when you go to the class for the first time you have to demand respect because if you come to the class like a joker they will never listen to you you Amen. don't have to be very assertive but when you come to the class you 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 tell them you know you 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 have fun but then you make sure you set that boundary unless you set that you have they will just take you for a joke Yes, Amen. but at Amen. that age, when will they break off from 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 this behavior? Listen, but, they, um, they get up, they get they get up to from um, five, they get up to um alpha loose, and they behave the very same way. And I know you that from experience. from a different home to a different background. Right. Not only a different background, the children have different issues. Different homes, yeah, different backgrounds, different issues. Yeah. That's why they tell you every child in your class is different. You can have 45 children with 45 different personalities in your class. That's wow. right. Children are the same. And mm -hmm. that is something that you have to understand when you teach it. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Sister Naomi. Very valuable, valuable contribution. Since um, we, we, we all are contributing greatly tonight, this is, this is an exercise, I'm telling you, that's beyond any we have ever had. Um, like I said, doing the character um, um, development course up here, we too have to implement new ways and new strategies to our ministry to move forward. Amen? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I mean, since the children now they live, they live on the gadgets. You know, the, the, the children live on WhatsApp, Facebook, um, um, YouTube, Google. Before the teacher comes out with a lesson, I mean, some of those children there, they hear what the teacher say, but there are so many different views and so many different um, things that they listen to, which is already creating a distraction. It's not like what I, uh, the time that I went to school, what the teacher says is all what I know. Hello? Uh, the children now, uh, it's not just what that's in the book. Some of the children, they love, they love um, the internet information better than what's written in the book. 
some of them don't want to read the book. They just want to go online and say, uh, Google this. Or there is that little creature that they speak. What's the name called? Um, Carol, no? Do you know what's the name? Cotton. I don't always. Cotton, cotton, what is that? You know? To her, unless she knows all of them, and then I expect those things to give her the answer. So in us now approaching um, the, the generation today, we don't just have to have a message, but we need to have a method from God that works. And that's what the, the dual generation is, is about. The dual generation is not a denomination or a church that have a pulpit for 15 years. They never change the location of that pulpit. You know, they never do nothing different. They never change the location. They never change the paint. They never, a lot of things they don't change because they call all of them, all those things holy, right? No, but it does not work. A lot of um, churches doesn't even appeal to the young people because all the activities are done within the four walls. Most of them. They don't even go out with the young people to say, okay, let's go to Pigeon Point and have a prayer meeting this evening. Let's go by the beach. Let's go in the breeze. Okay, let's have prayer and pizza. PP. Friday we're having prayer and pizza. But they say, let's have prayer meeting. But if you didn't leave young people, you need to make the thing attractive. You know how, how they feel about prayer. But when they have prayer and pizza, we pray first and then pizza after. Everybody bring $5. We're good to go, right? It's prayer and pizza. So, again, it goes back to the way we package it. And then, so what we're discussing there tonight is getting the attention of people. And I can tell you, Jesus was a master of that, where he got the attention of so many people, um, including the woman at the well. Amen? Your message Amen. starts right there. Some people, their message ends right there. Since if you're going to get the person's attention, not even in sales, Sales is something that I love. You know why I like doing sales? It helps me with my ministry. Sales have um, given me a lot of experience to present the gospel. Because, some, because I, I, will, I can sell anything. Brother Michael, you heard me? Yes, I'm hearing you. I'm hearing you. What I just said there. You said you could sell everything. Still, I can sell still. anything. Once it's good, I can sell anything. Right, Brenda? Amen. 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 Brenda and myself. Don't, trust me, don't play by us. When you see Brenda and myself go on the road and sell, Brenda just tell him, Jerome, go there. And when I come back, I tell Brenda, look the money. If, if you say, I say nothing to Brenda, Brenda doesn't ask me. Yeah, she knows they don't buy. It's not that I ain't good because I can sell anything. Right or wrong, Brenda? Amen. <laughs> I can sell anything. I, I love sale and I have a passion for it. And the reason why I bring, sales has given me the experience to bring out the word of God. Now, Amen. I'm using the same sales strategy I have when I present the gospel to people. Sales, mm -hmm. a little experience there. I, I worked with a U.S. company, and those people, they are sales zombies. Sales zombies. There's what you call all kind of zombies. zombies. Those people are sales zombies. I worked with those people, and they were flying from, from country to country, island to island, making hundreds of dollars of, of, of a product. The, the people said to me, the, the, the slogan is win, W-I-N. And that's all they care about, win. So I ask them, what is win? They tell me win is what's important now. And what's important now to them is cash. They don't care about sales. They don't care about no excuses, who buy, who don't buy. So it's either I bring cash for them or they fire me. <laughs> they don't care about that. It's win they care about. So when you look at it up here, they didn't care um, if you are a belly, if you don't eat today. All they're saying to you is win. Win mm -hmm. or go home. You hear me, you, 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 hear, you hear that, Brenda? Yep. All that, that's what they care about, win or, or go home. Now, when, you, when I look at it up here, in working for those people, um, we, had, we were doing sales every, uh, every Sunday, different sales strategies and all kind of things those people teaching me. But the very strategy they were teaching me was not working in the Caribbean. Because I was the only Caribbean person that stayed with them um, uh, um, in all the Caribbean people they hired. 
I was the only one who stayed. You know why? Because I never used this strategy. I use the strategy that I know works for Caribbean people. This strategy is you tell the people and you show them the figures to impress them. My strategy was I give them a little bit. I tell them, try that. You understand? They didn't know I was giving the product away because I had enough, because what they give me for me to spray, to do demonstration things, a lot of those things, I was using that as samples to give to the people. I said, look, George, try that. Try that. And you know those people were calling me to do to give me the money, and that's how I was making money. And I was the only Caribbean person who said if those people. Because I know Caribbean people, they don't buy by figures with those things. They want to try the thing. So I tell George, try that. But I never revealed to those people how I was making my money. Are you all there with me? So yeah. I'm saying that to you to, to say that sometimes people do not accept the gospel, not because the gospel is not good, but it's the way whoever presents the gospel presents or, or the packaging they use. Um, I see the hands of Sister Motler. Yes, give me your hand. I see your hand up top. Yes, when dealing with young people and children, they do not want to do the same thing every day. Mm. And um, they don't want you to come at the same angle every day. No. Um, they like surprises, especially yes. the times we are living in the media. The media moves. It's, it's every time you come, on, you, you, you turn on your computer, you will find something new. Something mm -hmm. new is up. And yes. um, so you must realize that children now are looking for excitement. They look for a change. They look for something different. Mm -hmm. And if you're going to go with the same, same um, um, technique, same, same um, mode of teaching, yes. you will lose them. You will lose them. You will bore them. Right now, the children get bored so easily. You hear that all the time. When children are around, you listen to them. They're play, playing together and you'll hear they say, I'm bored. I'm bored. So, um, going to the children and young, young children, older children, sorry, even to secondary age, you have to you have to keep up with the times you have to be creative you have yes. to you have to come up pull a trick out of your heart you have to be like a magician you have to rightly said sister but well said um, wow the other thing you get the other help the um first of uh, one of the first things when you are bringing the word, because we want to bring them the word, the um, even in the character um, development, yes. you have to um, you have to make it exciting. Mm -hmm. But it's not just you; you have to go in the power of the Holy Spirit. You have the help of the Holy Spirit. Oh yes, yes. Um, there are times, all of us who are going to the school, I don't know about Brother Gerald, but the group I have been going to mm -hmm. the school with, Yes. there are times we have said we're not going back, we don't want to go back, we, mm. and then next time you go, you, we pray, and we ask the Holy Spirit to guide, and we go in there, and it's piece of cake. Wow. So yes, it's, you do have it, those days. You have to pull tricks out of your heart like the magician on the on, or they used to have in the Pony Islands in the in, in, in these circuses. You have to pull a trick and be you creative. Be well creative. Said. Children don't want books anymore. No, they don't want books. They don't want you to come and open a book in front of them and read to them. They don't want to. That's why no. I'm saying we need to try to memorize as much as we can whatever we will deliver um, to them. Some of it you don't have a choice, you have to read some, but try your best to memorize it and um, make it your own, house it, amen? Own it, are you all there with me? And that's how you're gonna be effective. So mm -hmm. since, Sister Motler, let me just pause on what you're saying here to bring this in. 
what Dr. Sifas have done is to give us a, a guide and give us a message and that can fit into the times um, in terms of presenting the message to the children. But we all need to have a goal. You cannot present something without the, the goal or the objective. The mm -hmm. goal or the objective is why am I talking to the children? Mm -hmm. Amen? Mm -hmm. Why am I going where I'm going? Why? Yes, God sent me. You understand? But why? What does he want me to do? Mm -hmm. Amen? Mm -hmm. who, whom, uh, uh, who he wants me um, to, to talk to? Okay? Mm -hmm. When? Why? I, I, I'm bringing all the W's. Amen. You can you you, you can question yourself um, on on the W's. Now, when preparing, then, when preparing, you bring up all the questions. You bring up all the questions mm -hmm. because by the time you bring up all the questions, the Holy Spirit will be able to guide you. Yeah. So now um, I'm, I'm looking at faith here because remember I told you I present it. Faith versus presumption. What Dr. Sifas did with it, and that's what you will see. Some of you, you, you um, I, I emailed it to everybody. So I am not going to use um, um, the electronic to go over it tonight because you all have it. So let me just talk freely on it. So it will give some people a guide because you have an assignment to prepare. It has faith versus presumption. So that's one. You have all the others in it. So um, he gave us one or two meanings. So this one has two meanings of faith. But it does not change the scripture. So what you need to do, um, always read the scripture. So always read the scripture. The reason why we are reading the scripture, it is the word of God. That is the authority. Are you all there with me? Amen. So when I go to Amen. the schools up here, since I, I make the children know firsthand, one, I'm a Christian. Um, I look at things from a Christian perspective. Because sometimes in teaching, they ask you questions and they expect you to give them the answers that they like. Are you all there with me? And because Amen. you are a Christian, they will not like all the answers you will give them. So say to them that you are a Christian and your views will be a Christ Christian views or Christian perspective. Sister Mottler, are, are we on the same page? Because you always at the school. Do you get questions and you relate to them? Yes, yes, you get questions. Uh, um... And they may come up with something out of this world. Yeah. Uh, for example, I went talking to them about eternal life. Yeah. And I always um, try to use that example too. So that teachers um, going to the children now must understand the times when they knew eternal life was um, something that they went through the father i'm um, jesus through um you you do good you go to heaven you do um bad you um you you lost you go to hell you um saved you go to heaven sorry what they know now is that there is another and they've gotten it on the internet there are another other ways that are being hmm. um there, there are other ways that are being um pushed hmm. that they can there is the uh, where they um they freeze their body, they freeze their head, mm -hmm. they and move. then they can get um, it's like, it's like they, a limbo bliss. How they call it again? Huh? No, it there's a name for it when now the stars and them they freeze their head because they're looking that they will be coming back using right. that head or that body mm -hmm. or whatever. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Also, one child told me, uh, a man told her. Her soul can be taken and put inside of a, 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 a robot. Mm -hmm. So you see, you will be faced with these, kind, these kinds of things. She can have her soul put in a robot. And uh, so why, why, what's the, what is there about when you will bring up um, character development, morality? Yes. Yes, um, yes. They will look at you as what you're talking about. I can live how I want. And when time comes, they're going to take my soul and put it in. A... So we have to be on top of things. No longer are we to live a anymore yes. in black bottles anymore. We have yes. to, to be one, head of, uh, one step ahead of them or head to head with them. 
Amen. Praise God. Well said, Sister Mortla. Okay, saints, let me just break down um, this here. It will help us with our assignment because um, we do have to choose a character trait and then present it up here. With the heading of mine here, this is the one I'm presenting, is faith versus presumption. So the, the meaning that you have there at the top, it, it gives you the, the meaning for the character trait that you have. You can use the meaning because it's already broken down and, and is, um, it's already explaining itself. Amen? So mine says, faith is visualizing what God intends to do in a given situation and acting in harmony with it. So with this there, you can bring in whatever um, descriptive ideas you have to, better, um, to help them to better understand it. Maybe you can... Um, bring forth a, 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 um, an illustration or demonstration. So next to me, I teach faith with an empty plate. Amen? I may have the empty plate in my hand. So I come there to teach faith with an empty plate. Prophet, why are you using an empty plate? Well, I use, I, I use the plate. The plate will catch their attention. Just a plate in your hand talking, a lot goes through people's mind, right or wrong. And then I have, I have the cutlery with it. I have my knife and I have my fork right there with it up here. So they know I'll be talking about some food. So I said, um, visual, faith is visualizing what God intends to do in a given situation and acting in harmony with it up here. Now, my, my, my mother or, or whoever, my wife, cooked something great. Or she told me, she sent me a text, and she tell me what, she, what she's cooking, my favorite at home. You know, immediately, your body reacts to what you hear, right or wrong? Amen. Amen? You see so many mm -hmm. things that moves already? All your senses, all your organs moving. Why? Because of what you heard. Yeah. So I say to them, faith is visualizing what... Faith is visualizing what God intends to do in a given situation and acting in harmony with it. If you're going to visualize it, you have to first believe it. You know why my body reacted to what my wife um, told me she was cooking? Because I trust my wife. Amen? I know she, that text, she did not lie. My favorite. And I get energy. I have not even eaten the food and I've already gotten the energy. So I said to them, this is how the faith works. When you connect to, wood, to God's word, you're also connected to God. Right or wrong? Amen. Amen. Uh, I tell them, you can never connect to God's word if you don't connect to God. God is not a liar. If you do what, what the word says, God will reward you with what it says. So I say to them, I'm already feeling filled. I'm satisfied because I'm not even eating the food yet. I'll be eating the food later when I go. I'm not even eating the food. Just that place. You understand? Wow. Since growing up, um, I don't know how many of you grew up in a house where there were five, six, seven, eight, some of you 12 children. But when you see, when you see um, your mother in the kitchen and start dishing out, you know, the food in the plate, ah, everybody's smiling, right? <laughs> because we know we're going to eat. We know food coming, right? That's right. That's, I said to them, that's how faith works. Amen? There ought to be a level of belief in it. So visualizing what God intends to do in a given situation and acting in harmony with it. You know, I don't leave the house when I see my mother dishing out the food because there are so many of us and I try to see if she can put the best piece of bags on my plate. Oh, you know that? If he can put the best piece of bags on my plate. So sometimes, and I used to suck finger. Let me tell you what I did. In sucking finger, Brother Michael, my mother is in the kitchen. I then suck in the finger and I play in her skirt. You think this is my mother's skirt I want to play? I don't want my father to shout after me. I dare, I dare, I dare, I dare um, touching my mother, you know? You know, trying to buy, you know, a little favor there. To see if my mother will tell me, stay there. And my mother enjoying that little love touch. But you think it's that touch I want, I'm, I'm about getting a bit of chicken? <laughs> So I said to them, that's how it works. Visualizing what God intends to do 
in a given situation and acting in harmony with it. Since if you stay around God, that's why I say to them, if you're going to visualize, you have to act. If you stay <laughs> around God, you must get something from God, right or wrong? Amen. Amen. There is no way you will stay around God and God will, God will allow you to stop. You will never get hungry. Didn't we read in the Bible that the crowd that stayed around Jesus got bread? Amen. Right or wrong? Amen. Yeah, they always got bread. Yeah. In fact, some people followed him for the bread too. Yeah. The Bible said so. Some of those people were only following him because then the man just taking anything and he making bread with. I would have followed him for those bread too. Uh -huh. Some you of you don't play hypocrite because you would have done the same thing. Any man, Brenda, any you man that they can drink bread so they can eat with me. You exactly. don't have to bring the bread, prophet. The bread just coming. You really? yeah, bread just coming. Ah, I follow in him. Hallelujah. So I some of them. So I said to them, you can never um, stay around this. God. Hallelujah. And don't and don't get what the word of God says. So yes. with that now, I say it better explains um, visualizing what God intends to do in a given situation and acting in harmony with it. So with all what he says there, I have to understand it. But I use that plate and my wife, what my wife would cook just to bring it home to them. Amen? Amen? So that's one way of breaking the word. We need to use things. Jesus used parable sins. Sometimes, unless you get what people understand and fit the word of God into it, people will never understand it. Right or wrong? That's what, that's what we need Amen. to do. So visualizing what God intends to do uh, we, we give and, and acting in harmony with it. The second meaning, if you need it, use it. But sometimes it's not because Dr. Sifas gives you two meanings that you it, it is a must or you're bound to share both meanings. Walk with the meaning that's working for you. Dr. Yes, um, um Sister Motla, I see your hand. Um, um when preparing your lesson, you have to have the scripture, um, the Bible focus, the, the script, the story you want to bring across. Um, but you don't want to read it because they don't want they will, you will lose them. You will lose them. You don't want to read it. Yeah. So you memorize your story. You know as your much story. as you can. So what you, you want to tell say. them your story like you passed through town and something happened, or you saw a story on TV and you come in and relate it. Yes. No longer you read a story to the children, you lose them. You lose so them. So you relate the story of the Bible. Yes. You, um, you, um, you encourage them to bring out the central truth. Um, if they cannot bring out the central truth of the story, then you help them bring out the cent central truth. Yes. Um, you have your key verse, which is the, the verse the you want scripture. them to memorize. Yes, right. But don't expect children now will go and memorize like before because no. they are not taught one and one or two again, one and one or yes. two again. Mm -hmm. So you can have them do creative things like um, sing it, rap it, sing, um, rap the verse, sing the verse. When I say rap, I don't mean um, I don't mean rap it in a towel, you know. I mean, <laughs> rap. yeah, we understand. Ta -ta 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 -ta. You know, you are, you are the big twist. So you yes. you do it and you ask each child to go home and maybe set a tune to it. It can be a slow tune, it can be, and there you will get them to memorize for you. Very true. The Amen. Life lesson, Since you have to get them to see the life lesson in the world, what applied to their own life. Wow. I just realized our time um, has, has um, gone past the time I said, unless you can give me five minutes just to run my outline, um, run through quickly um, this outline with you. But then the, the, the talk was very important and very interesting too. Can I get five minutes just to run the outline here? Mm -hmm. Amen. Is it amen? I have majority with me because I'm trying to stick up um, to time with you. Oh, okay. So now what Dr. Sipos have done at the top, he gives you either one minute or two minutes. But you remember you have the scripture to it. For some places you quote your scripture first. But then he has already given you the meaning if you needed to use it. Then he also gives you um, the application. So um, there, with the application, not the app, is, yeah, no, not not the application. A better understanding how you, uh, how you you would apply the meaning. 
So then you will see two better, not two better, two believers. So after he gives the meaning, he says here, believers can best visualize, see, and understand the will of God as a result of having a close relationship with him. But that is all, this is here to explain the first one. The first meaning says of faith was visualizing what God intends to do in a given situation and acting in harmony with it. And then now, after you have said that, then what he gives you there is also explaining what he means and how you could apply it. So he says believers can best visualize, see and understand the will of God by having a close relationship with him. So there is no way, if I have to interpret this, there is no way you could have faith in God without a, re a close relationship with him. Amen? Amen. And then the second Amen. one, um, like the first, is um, same application. Believers can best visualize, see, and understand the will of God by setting their affections on things above and not on the things of the earth. And it's the same way with that faith sense. You would best do it by setting your affections on things above. If you're going to have faith in God, then you need to have your affection on things above, not on the things of the earth. Are you all there with me? Amen. Amen. You will be a stronger yes. believer by setting your affections on the things above. And you can further break it down. Remember Amen. your scripture here. You can get other scriptures to put with it. We give you one, Hebrews 11, 1. But there are so many other faith scriptures you can use too. Amen. Oh, I was going to ask you that question, Prophet, because when yes. I look at the one I, I am interested mm -hmm. in, mm -hmm. I, I got a scripture that I yes. feel that will tie my string. No in. problem. Prophet, you can, you, so I, you, did use, I did not use the scripture he had. I got one that will tie my message. Right. You can use it. Mm -hmm. okay. Your flexibility. Yes, you can use it. Okay. And then it comes down to the question, um, a thought provoking question. The reason why you ask a question, because in the Bible, a lot of questions were asked to Jesus, and that's why we have a Bible today. Are you all there with me? You don't ask Amen. the question because you think they, um, you're giving them a test, but the question is supposed to lead to something. The question is tied to your teaching. So if you teach in a certain way, since um, you, can, you don't have to choose all five questions in the sequence that it is. Choose the question that is tying with your teaching. Are you there with me? Mm -hmm. okay. It's not saying mm -hmm. question number one is question number one you should ask. Um, maybe, I, maybe the best one you should appropriate here is maybe number two. Have you ever done anything by faith? And that is enough. Are you there with me? Or maybe it's question mm -hmm. five, but you need to know it. So, so the whole thing about it up here, you are interacting with the person by asking the question, because you ask the question because you want to say something, right or wrong? Amen? And yes, you will notice yes. here, immediately after the five questions, you come down to application. You, you, you have to help the person to apply, and that's why I say to you, do it with yourself. Um, answer it yourself, you'll understand. You're helping the person to apply your message. And, and, and Dr. Sifos has undermined, since I'm doing fifth application, it, 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 it asks me a question. How does a person walk or live by faith? Now, you know, I'm expecting you to tell me the things. You, In other words, tell me if you learned anything from what I told you today. Right or wrong? Amen? Amen. That's what I'm simply saying there, but in, 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 different form, in a different format. Um, or, um, how does a person walk or live by faith? So they are saying it to you so you know if they got it. Amen? Mm. So, Prophet, uh -huh. can, can I, um, 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 I'm understanding that you are saying that when you are doing your lessons, the, the final part where you have the five questions, Mm -hmm. Select one or two that suit you. Don't do all. Don't do all. Just do one that because you see the Holy Spirit is leading you now into an area based on your presentation. You may not need all. Use one or two, or if you if you use all, it's up to you. But use one that ties. I want to see a sequence. Okay. You understand what I'm saying? Because I want to see when sequence. I, when I did whatever, what I I I. I and well, I personally sat and I answer everyone for myself. Everyone well, you can do that, eh? It's on the thing. 
Mm -hmm. So that's why I'm asking you because I have done it. I answer everyone. Yes. Basically. You can do that. But um, what, when you will get a chance also to present it to me and us, we will listen to you. So, but I'm, uh, what I, I, I'm judging you on sequence. I need to see how, what you say in time from top to bottom. Okay, okay, I understand, I understand. Uh, I'm looking for that. That's why I said to you, I'll do it. So but last, when I come tonight, last, I will explain it. The latter okay. part, the latter part, I can, I can still hold on to it because I will have to explain it yes. to you. Okay, mm -hmm. then I've done it, mm -hmm. so I want to go. Yes. So you notice Dr. Sifas gave you five questions there. Um, maybe it's one you need. Say David took five stones. How many stones he used against Goliath? One. 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 one, exactly. So God may just need one. He may not need all five. But then I'm just showing you. And sometimes in your talk up here, you may not even need a question. The person is already converted or whatever you do, and you have already reached your goal. Just climax, right or wrong? Amen. But I'm looking in what you're doing. I'm looking for a sequence. Some of you, if you don't need it, if you don't have it, I will send this recording out so you can listen to it again. But this is what I'm saying is recorded. Amen. Amen. I'll send it out tonight. I'll send it on the group so you will you, you will get it again. So now that he asked the five um, <sighs> application and then application, there was a question immediately after application how to apply that message. It says to the person, um, how does how does a person walk or live by faith and not by sight? Yeah, that's what I was teaching. That's my subject on. So they say to me, so, 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 so. I know the person gather it, whatever. Now, there is another place that you will see to have my personal note page on, on developing character. Sorry, my personal note page on developing the character of faith. Now, there are four or five, six areas up here in terms of how you gonna apply this? Since all those areas, you don't have to touch all those areas, but then there could be an area for one, he says, I am applying the character of faith in my spiritual life in the following ways. So now you may answer all for yourself, but then you can ask the person, how do you how how do you intend to how do you intend to apply? this message to your spiritual life. Can you please tell me? Now, based on the answer they give you, you can know they want to get saved or they're hungry for God. Amen? Amen. What I just said to you, how do you intend to apply it? You know, maybe if you are in a subject, maybe for financial, you can say financial life or whatever, but then I don't need all because I may ask him the, the reversal. He says, I am developing the character of faith in my spiritual life. So I can ask them if I was in soul winning. But then if it's not a different thing, you just want to know, you know, how the person, you know, intend to use it. And they will give you answers. Well, they will tell you, um, in my spiritual life, honestly, uh, boy, I, I go along the road by some fellows. I, I tell myself this year, guys, I want to change. I ain't going on there again. So you can say that's someone who's ready to repent, right or wrong? Yes, but prophet, that is not, that part of the lesson there is not applicable to a classroom setting. No, it's not, teach, it's not it's applicable. It's not applicable. One -on -one. It's yes, that looks it's like not a applicable. One -on -one but listen, you so have to make it applicable, it. sister. Mm -hmm. Let me show you this. It's not applicable the way I say it there. But then what you want to know in the classroom setting, you want to know how the children are going to apply your message. You want to know that they, they, they have it clear of, in terms of how to apply. They, they, they must not be confused, right? Yeah, but prophet, maybe if I am doing a particular thing, maybe if my application there now is to give them a scenario. Right. Whereby I will tell them, okay, for example, this morning, how many of you took the bus to come to school? Uh huh. How are you so sure that you are going to get to school safely? So you mm -hmm. exercise faith mm -hmm. in whom? And mm -hmm. I will tell them how that same kind of faith that you exercise there. Right? Then you're going to use that faith to exercise in God when you seek Him and you ask Him for whatever. So I will go. have a scenario. Now, remember, I said to you, remember, I said to you, application is what we end with. Amen? It may not be a form of question, but then you are ending with application. You, you care, you concern, you want to make sure that whatever you say to the children, they can relate to it. Right? Yeah. That's what we end with. 
So um, in your message, what I am looking for, the sequence I'm looking for, I am looking for um, application. Now you notice that um, with, with in, in this character um, manual, we have four or five questions that hit key areas, you know, based on the way Dr. Sippers wrote it. But then you don't have to take that pattern. But at the end, I'm looking for application. So um, you have, for sure, um, at the top of it, let me just bring it into a more uh, a sim simpler form. You have your introduction is set up there. It's faith versus, um, faith versus presumption. That's my introduction. Then I'm coming, just like the same format of a letter. Then I'm coming down to the body up here. It explains it a little better. Then um, it comes down to you now, you know, um, getting into the meat of it, the person understands it. And then at the end, it's almost you like you're like doing sales. I want to close it, but I want I want to close it on the right note. If, if it's a sin, I want to win the soul. If, if Tisa Naomi, I'm um, student, you want to make sure that they can do the work. Amen? So you give them homework, right? Mm -hmm. Right, sister? Mm -hmm. Naomi? Okay. Is that why you're doing homework? You ask the question. Brother um, Jerome, yes. if you have a class, mm -hmm. you would um, direct the question to the class. You would ask them the life application question. Take for instance, yes. what must I do to become genuinely meek in my um, relationship with God. Yes. What can you do? You uh, um, you um, direct the question to, to them. What yes. can you do? To, if it's one person, then you ask that person the question directed to one person. If it's a class, you direct it to a class. Yes. Yes, yeah. that, yes it, it, it works. It works. It works that way too. So then what you do, you, you use one to educate all, right? Uh -huh. You direct the question, the life question, the life application question to yes. the entire class. But yes. if you are one on one, you meet one on one and you're talking to somebody, the same question applies. It's yeah, just it, 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 yes, it, yes, it, it, it applies that way. So remember, yes. since at the end, the key thing here, the, the the key to the, our message is application, and that is in scripture. The woman at the well, she forgot her water pot. Reason for it is was because of application. Are you all there with me? Mm -hmm. she immediately went and preached. Mm -hmm. And because that's what Jesus was making out of her anyway. Right or wrong? Mm -hmm. To be a messenger. Mm -hmm. She even forgot his water she came for. <laughs> Hallelujah. So application um, is very important. Introduction is good, but I am so concerned about application. You see, when I, when, I, when I speak to people, especially about the things of God, since I am concerned about how I end. I want to make sure that I end it good. Are you all there with me? Amen. Mm -hmm. I want to make sure we do our Amen. best to leave no, no stone unturned. You want to make sure that you, 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 lead, you lead them to the well. I'm not saying that like people say you can force them to drink, but I want to lead you to the well. Amen? Amen. Um, any questions? I hope nobody is confused. We have, have reached the end of my faith presentation. Um, since we will be meeting, uh, when is our next meeting day? Friday. Friday. Uh, Friday, you have to make a presentation. Remember, I told you what I'm looking for. I'm looking for the sequence. I'm not saying you have to just answer everything there, but present uh, that message. You notice what I did today. I was speaking to a, a smaller group of children, maybe the five, six-year-old. I used a character. I put it in a David and Goliath. Then, you know, I, I went to all the children. Then I went higher. And since I can, I also had a video, I didn't have time to play it, but I did a video where, where if I was speaking to a church, you know, then how I, how I would minister my message, and I had it in a, in a beautiful message um, to do, mm -hmm. you know, um, thing, but I didn't have time to play the video. But what I'm saying, the, the, that same application, the same application that you use here, you can use it over and over. Great speakers or great men of God, they don't change... Um, um, what do you call, they format too much. 
you notice they would master something and build on it, right or wrong? Read it, you'll see Jesus and parables, right or wrong? Amen. Yeah, Jesus and parables, he's not changing from it. He's just using the parables, because the stuff is working. So, I'm not saying you have to do it the way I'm saying there, but then if you like to give jokes, maybe you can look for jokes that can catch attention. You understand? Jesse is a master of the jokes, so he's using the jokes in the gospel. Amen? I like to act. Um, teacher Anita can tell you that I like to act. I like drama. So sometimes I, I, I bring drama into my teaching. But bring something that you have, whatever talent God has given to you. Amen? So, Amen. Prophet, in the presentation, you can do it like, you, like you're talking to, you pretend like you're talking to children. Yes, if you have one of the best ways of doing these things, saints, is if you see you talking to somebody, you can get it easy because they're talking back to you. You can write it because you know you're doing it with them, you're doing it for them, you're ministering. But you can do it if yourself. You can do it yourself. But what I'm looking for, I need you to take any of those characters up here and make a presentation. Like I said, I'm looking for that. You know, that flow, the sequence, hallelujah, from, from start to finish. I want to see that. I need to see a good start. I, I, I need to see the message. I'm looking for the way you're going to conclude it. Hallelujah. The moment you can do this with one, you can do it with all. Right or wrong? Yeah. Amen. And any one of you, once you master Amen. that, you can go anywhere and preach. Right or wrong? Yeah. Amen. You can go Amen. anywhere and preach the word of God. That's the basic. You can go anywhere and preach it. Uh, if, if we have no questions, I would like to close. I do not want to leave nobody in doubt of what they have to do. Um, I will release this message tonight on the group so that you can listen to it, go over it up here. It will help you for your assignment. Um, if we have no more questions, uh, Sister Najla um, will close us in prayer tonight. That is the end of day two. Hallelujah. Amen. Put your hands together, saints, for the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Amen. Lord. Jesus Amen. Is Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. This is the end of the two of our character development um, training course. Um, our next day, day three, will be on Friday, same time, where we will be hearing from you. It will be exciting. Hallelujah. To hear from you what character you will be presenting hallelujah to us since um, a lot of the information you already have it you can read it get in touch with me if you don't understand something we can always explain it to you but i'm believing god that it will be a very uh, a very successful course hallelujah any question no question hallelujah sister najla go ahead close us in prayer thanks for the extra time since Abba Father, hallowed be your name. Great is thy faithfulness. Father and God, you are great God. You are merciful God. And Father God, we want to thank you, O oh God, for your knowledge tonight, O oh God, for the understanding, O oh God, that you have given us, O oh God. Father God, we want to thank you, O oh God, for all that you have done. We want to thank you, Lord God Almighty, for the food that you have given us, O oh God. You have given us good food, Lord. We have understood everything, Father God. And Father God, as we have understood, oh God, now we have to go out, oh God, and make a presentation, Father God. We have to show the application, Father God. We have to show the body. We have to ensure that the message is passed on, Father God. So, Father God, we ask that your Holy Spirit help us, lead us, guide us, oh God, to do the best oh God, that we can come out positively, Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, oh glory to God. Father God, as we are about to end, Father God, we pray, oh God, that you go with us, oh God. May, oh God, that you um, cover each and every one of us, dear God, under your precious blood, Father God, in the name of Jesus. Cover our homes, cover our entire family, Father God, under your blood. Give us sweet sleep, Father God, in the name of Jesus. And Father God, have your way and let your will be done. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Love you all. We want to say good night. See you on Friday for the last day. Love you all. Amen. Tonight.
I'll be on Let's the go. island, Brian. Yeah. Amen. Those of you who can join the and pray for the islands, we destroy hurricanes. We destroy Amen. 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 Praise God. Amen. Amen. I love you all. Love you all, man.